My name is Lisa Posthumus Lyons, and I'm the Kent County Clerk and Register of Deeds. Also on this conference call is Rob McCumber, our Chief Deputy County Clerk. Um, he will be working to administer this uh, Zoom conference, and I do wish him the best of luck. Um, also with us is Jared Uzarski, our Kent County Elections Director. Um, just kind of briefly lay out what to expect over the next several minutes. I'm going to make a brief statement. Um, and then after that, I will open it up and answer your questions, which uh, also will include an update on absentee ballot returns. Um, if you do have a question, uh, please use the chat box with your name and your uh, news agency so that we can um, know who's asking what questions. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Your right to vote is sacred and so is your right to safety. At Kent County, we take both seriously. COVID-19 has disrupted so much this year, but it will not disrupt this fall's election. With election day only four weeks away, and with this week being National Voter Education Week, I am excited today to unveil a new voter education effort called Kent County Votes. Kent County Votes and KentCountyVotes.com offers Kent County voters new resources to find the information and ask the question, answer the questions they'll need to vote safely and securely up to and including November 3rd. The countywide voter education effort will utilize radio and digital advertising to reach Kent County voters preparing to cast their votes to inform them of their many options and opportunities to do so safely and securely. Additionally, upcoming Teletown Halls will give voters the opportunity to interact with and ask questions directly to myself and other Kent County election administrators. This effort also includes a redesign of our Kent County Elections website, now accessible at kentcountyvotes.com. This website will be a one-stop shop for all questions and any information our voters need to know as they prepare to cast their ballots. This effort and KentCountyVotes.com empowers voters with the information and the resources they need from how to register to vote, to where to, uh, where to turn in and how to turn in their absentee ballots and how to track their absentee ballots and so much more so that they can cast their ballots safely and securely with confidence. There are four key tips that I wanna offer voters as part of this education effort. Tip number one, Kent County elections will be safe, secure, and transparent. Whether voters cast their ballot in person in the precincts on election day or vote absentee, their vote will be counted. Clerks across the county are busy modifying polling places to uh, adhere to CDC guidelines and safe social distancing practices as well. It will be safe to vote in person. Voters who do want to take advantage of their in-person voting op options can find their polling locations at kentcountyvotes.com. Point number two, recent election law changes make registering and voting easier than ever. Every registered voter now has the ability and the right to cast an absentee ballot without, without having an excuse or a reason. Also, citizens can register up to and including election day at their local clerk's offices and still cast their ballot in this election. However, it's highly encouraged that voters register before election day. Tip number three, those choosing to vote absentee have three options available to them to return their ballot. Option number one is to simply hand deliver your absentee ballot to your local clerk at their office. Option number two is to return the absentee ballot in the mail. Though we ask you to plan accordingly and mail your absentee ballot back no later than seven to 10 days before election day. Option number three is to drop your absentee ballot off in one of our safe and secure drop boxes in the city or the township where you're registered to vote. Drop box locations can be found also at kentcountyvotes.com. Remember, only use the secure drop box in the jurisdiction that you are registered to vote in. Tip number four, finally, please be patient when it's time for election results. 
my office expects a huge influx of absentee ballots this year. And that means it is going to take longer to uh, count and process those ballots. Kent County election officials, our local clerks, and our election workers will work as, as quickly as possible to complete accurate election results. However, we are not going to sacrifice security and accuracy for speed. So please be patient. Your vote matters, whether it's cast in person on election day or cast via absentee. We launched this effort and KentCountyVotes.com to make sure voters understand their options and have answers to their questions so that they can cast their ballots with confidence. All that's left is for the voters to make their voices heard. At this time, I can take any questions that you guys might have from me. Reminder, if you can just say in the chat box that you've got a question. Okay, Lindsay from Wood TV. Hi, Hello. Lindsay. Hey, so I'm just wondering what prompted this move um, in putting these extra resources into voter education um, ahead of the election. Hi, Lindsay. I can't hear Lindsay. You hear me now? Hello? How about now, Lindsay from yeah, TV? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Maybe? I know you're trying, just can't hear you. Um, okay, I will, I will go ahead and ask, and, um, ask the question that Lindsay had. Lindsay from Wood TV wondered, what prompted this move to put extra efforts into voter education? Thank you for asking that question. Um, again, with COVID-19 really changing a lot and disrupting a lot of uh, what's going on with everyday lives, um, we really wanted to make sure that voters know that elections are safe and they're secure and they're transparent, pandemic or not. Um, we had several of our local clerks and several of our county commissioners uh, really wanting uh, to know if there's anything that we can do, that my office can do to help voters understand a lot of the changes that have been taking place and to uh, help uh, instill confidence uh, in our system. And so this uh, kind of, the changes along with the pandemic really uh, precipitated this uh, extra e voter education effort. Thank you for the question. Doug Reardon from Fox 17. Yeah, hey. Can you hear you, Doug? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me at all? Not here. Oh, bummer. Okay, let me. Doug? No. Yep, can you guys hear me? I'm really sorry, Doug. Is there a way you can write your question and I can read it aloud? Okay, Doug asks, a recent report by two national gun violence groups found that five swing states, including Michigan, had no laws that outright prohibit guns at polling places. What is your guidance on guns at polling, lo polling locations? Uh, such as churches and schools on election day. Well, my guidance is to simply follow the law um, and make sure that uh, there is no intimidation of voters and that their constitutional right to, to cast their ballot and make their voices heard is unabridged. Um, and again, election day is a day where we want to celebrate all of our constitutional rights. So again, we issue, we issue the guidance that um, all of our polling locations, our election workers and our voters just simply follow the law.
Any other questions? Emma from WZZM, do you have an update on how many absentee ballots have been requested countywide? Well, Emma, I just so happen to do have an update. Um, as of this morning, as of this morning, Kent County has received 173,302 absentee ballot requests. Um, as of this morning also, we have received 39,778 absentee ballots returned. So um, to give you a little perspective, four weeks out from the election, 28 days prior to election day this year, we have almost 40,000 returned absentee ballots. In 2016 uh, presidential election, we had a total of 68,967 absentee ballots on the to returned on total. So um, we are quickly set to outpace um, the absentee voting numbers uh, that we had um, last presidential election, though again, it certainly doesn't come to a surprise as a surprise to uh, myself or any of our election officials throughout the county, our local clerks. We are ready and we're prepared for that. Any other questions? Okay, <laughs> I've got um, Emma follow up. I know you already spoke to a delay to results because of the influx of ballots. Do you have any idea how long that could be? Okay, um, as it as it relates to counting absentee ballots, I want I want to kind of make sure we are framing this uh, really the way it should be. Um, a delay in reporting results is kind of a um, seems to indicate that there's a problem that is that's um, that's preventing um, results from being report counted and reported. Counting absentee ballots is not a delay in the process. It is the process. And so I want to be very careful when um, using um, when when talking about a delay in results. If we if we have a delay in reporting election results, that will mean that there is something um, not going right that's holding up the process. When it takes us time to count absentee ballots, that is the process. So yes, it will take time. Uh, we do ask for patience and going back to uh, going back to the August election, um, the primary election, we had about 70% uh, of our voters cast an absentee ballot. And at that time, we were expecting, um, we weren't expecting to report results until um, late Wednesday afternoon, evening at the latest. I mean, I had a cot set up in my office. That's, that's the extent to which we expected uh, the time to take to count these ballots. We were very pleasantly surprised. Our election workers and our local clerks did a great job. We had all of our election results reported before 5.30 a.m. Wednesday morning. That was a real, um, a real testament to the hard work that was put in. Um, now, come no, this November uh, on this election day, we expect probably double the turnout. And so that potentially could mean double the absentee ballots as well. So it could take, um, you know, it could take anywhere from 5.30 Wednesday morning until, uh, until every last vote is counted safely and securely. Um, I've got Michael Kranz uh, from Grand Rapids Press. Number one, are there, are there new ballot drop boxes that the clerk's office has placed around the county for this election? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that question first. Um, there has been a, a very large push in um, an encouragement of voters to utilize our secure drop boxes. Um, many areas in the country uh, and even in the state, this is something that's new to them. It's not necessarily a new concept here in Kent County. Most of our jurisdictions have operated with um, uh, drop boxes for absentee ballots. However, um, you'll find that some jurisdictions will be having will uh, be placing more. Uh, drop boxes throughout their jurisdiction. Um, and we just want to make sure that uh, our voters have every opportunity possible to submit their absentee ballots. And so drop boxes is one of those uh, great options, especially as we near election day. Um, so like I said, it's, it's not entirely new 
to Kent County, but it is definitely expanded and improved upon. And so uh, we want to, we just want to make sure that every voter has the opportunity to utilize a drop box and in this election they do. Um, question number two, when should residents realistically expect final results from the general election? Do you think it may stretch into November 4th and 5th? Um, I definitely think it will stretch into November 4th um, simply because uh, that's just the nature of counting, counting ballots. Um, I have yet to be in an election uh, in an August, in a statewide election um, where our Kent County results were reported before midnight on election night. So that just by default will take us to November 4th. Um, again, we're going to take all the time that we um, that we need to count ballots uh, securely and accurately, and we're going to do it as efficiently and effectively as possible. We will not sacrifice accuracy and security for speed. Any other questions? I think we'll give it just one more minute. Okay, I don't see any more questions in the chat box. Um, as always, feel free to contact my office if you do have further questions um, on, on this subject, on our Kent County votes, uh, voter education effort, or just as we approach election day. We just really appreciate you being partners and making sure our voters have all the information that they need leading up to election day. Thank you so much.